Hi. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about this concept of projectiles, but I'm going to start with horizontal projectiles. Uh, a projectile is basically any object that in, that's in flight in the air, but the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. In other words, we're going to ignore the uh, effects of air resistance. So that's pretty much what a projectile is. So now we're going to talk about like, well, how can we describe the motion of this projectile in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction? Because think about it. Let's say you have a table here and you have a ball rolling. When it comes here, it comes off the table and you can probably see that it's going to do something like that. It's going to roll like that. So it's basically moving forward and down at the same time. So there is two uh, motions. We're going to do the X and the Y direction. Okay. In the x direction, uh, if, if we assume that the only force acting on this while it's in the air is the force of gravity, there is no force or there are no forces acting on it this way, period. So if there are no forces acting on it this way, according to Newton's second law, there must be no acceleration. And if there is no acceleration, and I'm talking about the horizontal direction, and if there is no acceleration, it just means that the velocity should stay constant. So I'm going to call this V, V O X, or V O basically, uh, because I don't need to distinguish because the V O Y is zero. So I'm going to say, you know what? The V in the X direction is basically the V O. So in other words, when this object is here, okay, it's moving tangent to this curve. Okay, the velocity vector is tangent to this curve, but it has a component this way of the velocity and a component this way. This component here never changes. And the reason for that is because there are no forces in the horizontal direction, and consequently, there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. I hope you guys can see that. The other thing we can do is that in the horizontal dire direction, things are simple. So I can say Vx equals delta x over time. Well, what do I mean by delta x? Well, if I want to find the velocity of this object right at this moment, my delta x is this. If I want to do it at this moment, my delta x becomes that. So the delta x depends on the time. And the time is the time it took to go from this position to this position, or from this position to this position. That's pretty much what it is. Okay? And I think that's pretty much it. Now, this distance here is what we call the range. Okay? That's the horizontal distance traveled by the by the projectile. Now let's see what's happening in the y direction. I'm going to write the equation. So we, we usually have delta x equals vo plus vf over 2 times t. But I'm not going to call it delta x. I'm going to leave delta x for the horizontal direction. I'm going to call it delta y. And we'll simplify that. Okay. Then we have uh, delta y equals V O T plus one half A T square and we have V F equals V O plus A T and we have V F square equals V O square square plus two A delta X normally but we're looking at the horizontal direction. So these are your delta Y's. This is a delta Y, this is delta Y. It doesn't mean like the whole vertical distance until it hits the ground. Well, I think I'm going to simplify this. In the vertical direction, when the ball is fired, it leaves the table, it has no initial velocity down. So I think I can make this zero. And the VF is basically how fast is it moving down when it's at different places. So I think I can call this VFY. Okay. Now, this is gone as we said before. Now, the acceleration just because, because the acceleration of gravity, because the only force acting on this is the force of gravity, okay? Now, this becomes zero. This VF becomes the VF in the y direction, and this becomes G. This becomes the VF in the y direction. This is gone. A becomes G, okay? Now, the, the motion in the horizontal and in the vertical direction, or the motions are independent of each other. Okay. 
And here in the white side, I wrote the equations of accelerated motion because I know that force of gravity is acting down on this object. So I have to take into account the fact that there is an acceleration. Now I'm going to try to describe the, the, uh, the path of this projectile here. And the way I'm going to do that, um, I'm going to isolate the time here. So if I isolate the time in this equation, I get delta x over vx. Well, vx is basically just vo. Okay? Now, and I'm going to take that and put it in here in this second equation. So it's going to look like this. Delta y equals 1 half g. Then instead of writing t, I'm going to write this. I hope you guys can see that. Okay? And vo square here. But I'm going to take that vo, and I'm just going to put it over here. Okay, if you need to pause and go back to the video to see how we did the algebra, you could do that. Well, this is a constant, right? That's a constant. So this looks like y equals something x squared. So that's pretty much the equation of a parabola, right? So, so, the, so the trajectory of this is a parabola. That's pretty much what, what it is. And it looks like it, okay? Um, and I think we'll, we'll do some examples and you see how, how pretty simple this is. All right. Thank you.